All right, next Racing fans. So I know I haven't posted in a while. We're going to get back to it. Hopefully I can start posting at least one video a week. Keep you guys updated on what's going on and what we're doing. So at the moment, we are working on the, the seven bolt heads that I have here. So I have one here that's completely finished. This head here is already ported and polished, already ready to go to the machine shop. Um, at the machine shop, it's going to get decked. Uh, it's going to get the valves cut for oversized valves. And what else? And it's just cleaned up. And uh, this one also is going to get the valve guys replaced as well. So the valve guys in this one are cracked. So we're going to get the valve guys replaced in this one. Um, and then let me go ahead and get this turned around so you guys can see the other head that I'm currently working on. So this is the second head that I'm working on. I currently have three seven bolt heads. I have two seven bolt blocks. I got three seven bolt heads. Uh, the goal is to have one seven bolt block that's roughly in the anywhere from five to 750 horsepower range, 500 to 750 horsepower range. That block is gonna have manly turbo tough rods, CP pistons, OEM crank, gonna have GSC S2 cams, uh, probably Kigley Springs, not sure yet, maybe, maybe not. And that's gonna be the spare to the spare block. So that's gonna be just in case the spare block breaks and I don't have the main block fixed before I put the spare block in there and then the spare block breaks, you know, so. But then the other two heads and blocks are gonna get the ultimate treatment. So those two blocks are gonna get all aluminum rods, OEM crank, uh, GSE S3 cams. They're gonna get Kigley high pressure springs. They're gonna get Ferrera Competition Plus valves, oversized valves, the ultimate port and polish job on the heads as well. Um, uh, Multi-layer steel head gasket O-ring, the heads of the um, O-ring the blocks and all the oil port mods and all the other little small mods that you can do to help them out. So, but on this block here, so get back to it. So on this block here, as you can see, I'm currently working on it right now. The in, the exhaust ports are all done. It's kind of hard to see down there, but the exhaust side of it is all done. Now I'm working on the intake side of things. As you can see here, this is the first one that's completely done. You can kind of see in there. That one's all done, done up, ready to go. And this one here still needs some work done to it, as you can tell. I kind of marked it with a blue marker here, blue marker over there, another blue mark right there. So those are spots that I think that have high and low spots. So when you're sanding it down, obviously if there's a low spot there and you start sanding it, the blue is not going to go away until you get all the way down to that low spot and take that low spot away. So that's kind of why I marked it with the blue marker so I can see how much farther I need to go to make it actually smooth it, smooth it out. See here. Blue mark there, you can see the blue mark over there. A little blue mark here, fix it up. But I mean this is this is how it this is how it looked. It's a little bit beat up from the from the uh, how do you call it? The burr. There's a little bit beat up from the burr, but as you can see with time it's, it's been progressing. So this is kind of a rough, rough estimate. This one I sanded down just a little bit, this one just a little bit more from that one. As you can see, it gets better, and then this is like the, the last spot. So this is done pouring and polishing it as well. So that's what I'm working on right now. Uh, this head here still has, like I said, a little bit more to go. This head here still has to go to the machine shop as well. It's going to get decked, uh, cut for oversized valves. This one here, I don't think I'm going to replace the valve guides. I don't see any of them that are cracked or completely messed up. So that being said, since they're not cracked and completely messed up, I'm just gonna keep them how they are. Um, for some reason, my machine shop over here kind of charges, the guy wants to charge me $25 a, a, a guide to replace them. Maybe that's him including the guide, I'm not sure. I gotta call him back and figure out why is it so expensive. Normally there's like 10 bucks a guide just to replace it um, if I supply the guides, so. Got to get with them to see what's going on with that. But as you guys saw there, those are the rough castings. I go back to this block over here. As you guys can kind of see. And let me get a flashlight for you guys. Because you guys can see better in there. So as you guys can see. It's got a little bit of uh, dust in there. But other than that. 
See the divider in there is basically knife edged in there. So that way the air goes in there smoothly and divides out smoothly, especially with the injectors, with the injector spraying the fuel in there, it'll go to both sides evenly. You guys can see this side, this side's the exhaust side. There we go, that looks a lot better. That's the exhaust side. As you can see here, this exhaust valve guide is freaking destroyed. So I gotta get that replaced. And then a lot of them are cracked. So as you can see, this one here on the left side is cracked. Um, this, These two here, both of them cracked. So we're gonna replace one or two. Might as well just replace them all. So I'm obviously gonna replace them all and then take it to the machine shop get it replaced, get it decked, get the valves cut for oversized valves, and then it'll be good to go to build. So that's uh, that's that head. And we've got the two blocks over here. This block here has already been machined, ready to go. Have it covered up, have it sprayed down with a, a chemical that helps preserve the metal so it doesn't rust or damage or anything like that. The second block here still needs to go to the machine shop. That's going to be cut. Uh, cut. That's going to be bored out to 85.5 millimeters, so it's going to be a uh, 20 over block. Um, did the oil oil mod on the front, as you can see, it's nice and shiny in there. Oil mod. This one has it as well. Uh, oil mod done as well on that one. So this one's going to be taken over. This block here, this block is going to be the spare to the spare block. So this block is going to go with that head over there. So I do have a third head, like I mentioned before. Sorry for the mess, guys. I got a mess in this garage. But this head here, this head here is completely done. It's already been fitted with oversized valves. This head here has Kigley high pressure springs that I'm uh, probably going to end up taking out and putting into one of the other heads. And in this block, I'm probably going to put a other another brand of springs in it um don't know what brand of springs just yet but i'm probably gonna put a different brand of springs since this is the spare of the spare so i don't want to put all the good things into this head here or the other block so that's going to have some of the leftover stuff so i'm going to take the springs out of this put it in one of the other blocks and then i'm going to put a, another brand of springs in here like i said this is going to have this already has oversized valves in it. It's probably gonna have um, S2 cams or a stage two to three um, cam in there, depending on what I do with it. Change out the springs. Uh, they're all gonna have the AEM cam gears. Um, I have the cam gears in here. Let me see. So I have the cam gears in here, as you can see. I have two sets right now, so I'm gonna get a third set coming up soon. Uh, the goal is to have all the motors basically prepped and ready to go. So when I say when I say prepped and ready to go, so I want to have it to where I can drop this block into the car, and the only thing I really need to do to it is attach the intake manifold, attach the and attach the injectors, the exhaust manifold, the turbo. I want all of the timing to be done on it already. I already want it to be all done, the tension on it done, the timing belt on it. I want it to be completely ready to just drop in and then just attach the bigger stuff to it and be ready to go. So a lot of guys, when they build their cars or build motors, they just build one motor and then boom, something happens. You know, you, for, you spin a bearing or you get crank walk or you know something something stupid happens you know and then they got to take the motor out and then the car is just sitting there for days and days and weeks maybe even months and then you're trying to get the car fixed you know my goal is to have all these three blocks ready to go so that if something does happen to the first motor i can drop the second motor in right away boom you know something happens to the second motor and i haven't had the first motor fixed yet I can drop the third motor and boom, ready to go, you know? So that way I'm not, I don't have any downtime. I've always have these blocks done and ready to go. So that being said, up to obviously this is gonna be in my rear wheel drive drag car. Those are gonna be hooked up to a power glide transmission. So those being hooked up to a power glide transmission, 
if the motors work well then i'll just take this third motor the third spare motor that i'm going to have and maybe do another project car with that maybe a little small small tire car for the street you know who knows what we're going to do with that but so the another thing on these blocks is we are going to be running so let me go ahead and put this to the side over here so i can give, show you guys what's, what we're going to be running So we are going to be running a frontline fabrication billet oil pump. That being said, this oil pump does come with a remote oil filter housing. So basically you'll run a dash 10 line from the oil pump to the oil filter, from the oil filter to the intake of a dash 10 to the intake side of things. Then you do have a, also another, I believe it's a, maybe a dash eight uh, or dash 10 bypass that goes back to the, in, to the intake of the oil pump. So that way any pressure or any oil that's not being used at the moment with when the oil filter, the oil pump, goes right back into the intake of the oil uh, oil pump. So that way you kind of constantly have oil going through the system. I do need to purchase one more of these. So like I said, I do want to have the two motors ready to go just in case something happens. That being said, I probably need to purchase another one of these. The third spare motor is just going to run an OEM oil pump. So that one's just going to run an oil pump. This oil filter housing, remote oil filter housing, it, it's, it's good. But I think I'm going to go with one that has a primer on it. So there's an oil filter housing that has a basically a knob in the middle, which allows you to turn that knob with a, uh, what do you call it? Having a brain fart. Anyway, it gives it has a knob on the front where you can turn it and it builds pressure in the system to lubricate the system before you even turn the car on. That way all this all the bearings, all the, the rockers, everything, the lifters, everything is oiled up, ready to go before you even start the vehicle. That way you don't have any premature wear on your bearings or any type of surfaces like that. So I might I'm looking into that. I might get one of those. Um, have this on, on spare just in case. But I might, I'm looking into getting one of those. But as you can see here, I mean, I haven't really even taken it out the bag yet. So let, let's go ahead and take it out the bag and see, see what it looks like here, guys. I'm doing this with one hand, so look at that. It's a difference between showing you in the back and outside. So billet oil pump. And I cannot wait to get this thing on there and see how it looks and get it going. So, yeah, so I'll, I'll more than likely within the next month or two be ordering another one of those. I'll be getting the rods on order. I have the pistons already. I have, as you can see here, I've got the fluid damper down there. I got two fluid dampers. I have the OEM pump over there. I got the Ferrer valves back there. Got a lot of things back there that, you know, that are going to be used on these builds. So, but for now, I'm going to get one another one of these ordered, get the OEM crank order from Mitsubishi itself, get the, the rods order, the Vader aluminum rods ordered, and then the fuel system, um, the rest of the fuel system ordered. I do have the fuel pump that I'm going to be running. I do have the fuel, some of the fuel system equipment ordered and i'll show you guys that in another video what i'm going to be running in terms of the fuel system it's uh it's going to be interesting you you guys are going to you're going to like what kind of fuel system i'm going to run on this on this uh rear wheel drive drag car but for now i'm gonna leave you guys there like i said been working uh hard so gonna get this head here finished up get it put to the side once i get this put to the side i'm going to call up the machine shop to confirm the prices on it and then uh, we'll go from there so remember guys stay tuned we're next next racing <laughs>